Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is time for another video for my Inspired Saturday series. Today I will be collaborating with Teresa from Scrapping for Less. I hope you'll stick around, see how she inspired me, and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Like I mentioned in the intro, I am back today for another video for my Inspired Saturday series. If you're new to my channel or new to Inspired Saturdays, I'll tell you a little bit about it before I get started. I like to stop by pretty much every Saturday, but here when school starts back up, it might be every other, and I collaborate with another crafty YouTuber where we inspire each other. We take either a video or an Instagram post from the other creator and create something based upon that in some way. We each come on Saturday morning to share our videos so you can see how we were inspired. If after watching my video today, you're a crafty YouTuber who might like to join me for a Saturday, I do have some openings starting in October. I will link the original video with the instructions and the link to the application in the description box below. This week, I'm collaborating with Teresa of Scrapping for Less. Make sure when you're done watching my video that you go and check out the video she has made for today to see how I inspired her. I will be taking inspiration from a video she did for a collaboration that she's in. It's called the Lovely Ladies Collaboration, and you're just to share cards using female stamps. So here on screen now is a little screenshot of a video she shared, and I just like these cute little girls on cards. And I have bought lots of cute little girl images over the years, so I thought today I would get one of those out and ink them up. If you would like to check out Teresa's original video, that is also linked in the description box below. Before I get started on the process, I do want to share with you some of the products that I'll be using, but when I go to the process, I will start a voiceover, and if I add any other products, I will be sure to let you know. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. For my little girl stamp today, I'll be using this set from Inky Antics called Sending Hugs, and I'll be using this adorable little girl image down here where she's hugging the envelope. I will be stamping and embossing that with Versamark ink and Detail Black Embossing Powder. And then I'm going to color it in with a variety of Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. For my layout today, I'm going to use a sketch from the latest sheet load of cards, August 2020, and I will be switching my image area up just a little bit to fit my stamp and sentiment, and I'll be using the dimensions for a single card on the rest of it. If you want to find out how to download this file for free, check out my description box for the video link. For my papers, I will be using pieces from the navy floral stamp set from Die Cuts with a View. I did go ahead and cut those out, and I will be stamping and coloring my image on a little scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth. I find that this gets the best results when I'm using those Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. Let's get crafty! I'm going to be starting out today's card by doing all of the stamping. Because I might have to stamp something twice, I did go ahead and pull out my Misty. The sentiment I chose from the set says, Sending Smiles Your Way, and I inked this up with VersaFine Onyx Black. This went on that small piece of blue pattern paper that I had already cut. To ensure that I put my little girl image high enough on the piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock that will allow for the sentiment, I did go ahead and just temporarily place the sentiment there while I was setting down my image. Because I will be using embossing powder, I do run my embossing buddy over the front of the cardstock before I stamp it. This way the powder will only stick to the areas where I want it to. 
I did make sure to get this stamp nice and juicy before I brought it to the cardstock. And once I had it stamped, I poured on the black powder and then I brought in my heat tool to heat set that image. You'll notice that I did start with my heat tool on the back side of the cardstock and then I brought it to the front to finish the melting. Now it's time to get this little cutie colored. I did go ahead and pre-select all of my markers off camera. Some of them I will blend with lighter shades of the same color and some I will blend out with my colorless blender. Over to my right I have just a piece of scrap white copy paper and you'll see me later I kind of wipe the excess color from my brush off on this piece. I'm going to start by coloring the skin on my image. I chose 69 blush and 71 flesh color. I will be starting with marker number 69 and I will be placing this on the shadow areas of my skin. So that's going to be around the outside of the face, on the fingertips, and then some on the legs. Once I have that color placed down, I bring in number 71 and I blend that color out. You'll notice that every once in a while I bring my marker over to the side and I just wipe that darker color off the tip of my marker. This ensures that I do have some shading on the image. Next I brought in number 26 light pink just to put a little bit of blush on the cheeks. Once I had a dot laid down on the image I brought back in number 71 and blended that out a little bit. For the envelope, I want it to be white, but I don't want it to be completely white. I think you probably know what I'm talking about. So I brought in number 302 Haze Blue, and I put again just some shadows around the edges of the envelope and along the lines, and then I brought in my colorless blender and blended that out. This gives just a little bit of color to the envelope and still makes it look white with just a little bit of shading. Now it was time for a little 36 light blue and I will be coloring in the headband and her dress with this color. The process for the shading and blending is the same. I use the clear colorless blender on this. But while I'm doing that, I wanted to let you know my thought process behind the order that I do the colors in. I do generally like to start with lightest to darkest because you can always add more light but it's kind of hard to take away dark if you get it in the areas that you don't want it. Now I did start with the skin color instead of the envelope so maybe next time I would switch that around but I just wanted to let you know my thinking behind this. I decided to give my girl some golden hair, so I brought in number 61 light brown and number 50 yellow. I started by laying down number 61 where I wanted the shading to be in her hair. I then brought in that lighter color, the yellow, and blended that out. I do have to say that if I colored this image again, I would put a little bit more skin coloring on her face because her bangs kind of turned her forehead yellow and I got a little wild with her hair. It went a little bit outside the lines. I've never really colored hair like this where it's just lines instead of an outline for the hair. So this was new to me. Let me know below any tips you have for images like this. Once I had her hair colored in, I brought in number 260 deep red for the heart on the envelope and for the stripes in her leggings. I added a line of red along the outside of the heart and then I added some shading on the left and right of each of the stripes on her leggings. Then I brought in my colorless blender and blended that out. Because this red is so deep, I do have to wipe it off of few more times than another color while I am blending that. For her shoes I chose number 902 natural gray. I put a small line on each of her shoes and then I blended that out with the colorless blender. The last step of this image is to give her a little grounding where her feet are. And for this one, I brought back in the number 302 Haze Blue. 
I put a line beneath each of the lines on the stamped image and then just blended that out with my colorless blender. Now that my image was all colored, it's time to start putting this card together. Besides my pattern papers, I brought in a top fold card base from my stash. I added some adhesive to the back of my sentiment strip and this got placed on the bottom of my image. Now I originally cut this just slightly wider than I needed it, just so later it wouldn't be too short. So once I had that in place, I got out my scissors and trimmed off the excess. Next, I adhered the two pattern paper strips together, centering the pink one left to right on that blue piece. Next, I adhered the floral piece to the center of the card front, and then I would like to introduce you to the Papa of Foam Tape Rolls. Now, if you've seen me make shakers in the past, you know that I have something similar to this in a smaller width. I decided last week to go ahead and order a couple different widths because I just love this stuff. So today I am using the 3 quarter inch wide tape. I also bought 3 eighths inch I believe also. I added a couple strips of this to the back of the pattern paper strip and got that placed onto the card front. Because my focal point will be kind of on uneven ground, I did pull back in the skinny foam tape, and this is a quarter inch wide, and I added a strip of that to the right, and then I added some regular adhesive to the left side, just so it's nice and even across the card. And since you know that I can't finish a card without adding some bling, I pulled in my little stickers from Elizabeth Craft Designs. These have a silver border and then the center is clear with glitter. And I added three of those to the card front. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my card today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go check out Teresa's video. It is linked at the top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.